Sean Randolph, and you're watching Irish Football Fan TV. Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. It's me, Paul, as always, and this is my aftermatch reaction from Dan McNeil, Republic of Ireland, nil in our house. Ooh, another bit, uh, another nil all draw. It's becoming the norm. We don't score goals. We don't create goals. We don't create chances. We don't get out of our own half. But I'll go in with the lineup anyway. Uh, he started off with Randolph and goal. We all knew that. Duffy, Kyo, and Long, which he seems to favour a lot when, when Kieran Clark isn't there. But that's just the way it is. Uh, then he had Coleman and Andrew Stevens, like who I predicted would uh, play left wing back. Since uh, I heard McLean was called up, I never understood why he was in there. Should have been a game in Northern Ireland to blood end it in. I know he's played a couple of international games, but there was a chance to give him a full 90 before this game so he would uh, acclimatise more so to the system because it's a bizarre system, let's be honest. But uh, either way, I thought and had a had a decent game. He never really has a bad game for Ireland so far. Anyway, every time he comes on, he, he does he does moderately okay. So can't really say too much uh, bad about him. But then uh, moving into midfield, we have Cyrus Christie in there again in midfield alongside Hedrick and Brady. Now we're going playing our biggest threat in this group. I know we lost to Wales twice, but Denmark were a bigger threat and they beat Wales twice. So, for me, we're playing a right back and a left midfielder in centre mid against Denmark. And then he has Callum O'Dowda up front with um, Aidan O'Brien, who, like Aidan O'Brien, didn't even, uh, he didn't even play against Northern Ireland. Like, what is the point? It's like he's just throwing all these players in for the sake of just throwing it. Callum O'Dowda in that position again. Why can't O'Neill just play players in their positions? Their natural positions. Harry Arthur was on the bench. Conor Horham was on the bench. Why not play them in centre mid? That's that's their position. Surely they must be going, what on earth is this manager doing? He hasn't a clue. He ha I'm sorry, but he hasn't got a clue anymore. I used to, I used to rate him in his early days. And, you know, he's a great manager at Celtic and Leicester. But now he has lost the plot. Const constantly playing, you know, wingers in midfield. He did it with Aidan McGeady as well. Played him as a number ten. He just he hasn't got a clue, and he just he, he keeps on arguing. Oh, we don't have the players. We do have the players. We just don't play them in the right position. And when you start playing them in the right position, we might have a bit of shape to us because this defense thing that you have is just it's not working out. We get the ball, and we try to knock a couple of passes in our own half. And the next minute, it's just lumped to nobody because everyone's dropping deep to try and get a hold of the ball. Even our strikers, or striker, in Aidan O'Brien, he's constantly in his own half because he was trying to get a hold on the ball. But then when we hoof it, there was no one in their half to get on it. And there was no one to be able to take it down and bring our midfielders into play. And not even at that, because our wingbacks weren't even able to get up. Because we, when we have the ball, their job is to get forward. But because the ball is so up in the opposition's half so little, they don't get a chance to get up in support. There was a couple of times throughout the whole game that the two the two, two lads got up there. Uh, at one point, Coleman, I think it was just before half-time, he, he was taking on their last full-back and look, had a look up. And Cyrus Christie was the furthest man forward in the box. One player. And it was our centre-mid slash right-back slash right-wing-back. Like, this is becoming a joke. And I feel sorry for the people that went over, to travelled to that game. Because you, 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 they go and they put so much energy and, you know, they, they have great fun going to these trips. But at the end of the day, they're going to see Ireland. They're going to see them play. They don't want to see them sit behind, park the bus and do nothing. Like, create no, absolutely nothing. And it's gone on now. I think that's four games and no goals. In competitive fixtures, forget Aidan O'Brien's goal, but like it's an absolute farce, and you know I just I just don't I just don't get how like it's it's being allowed to be 
just, oh, well, you know, they can't afford to get rid of them. Get rid of them now. You need to get rid of them because it's it's an ongoing problem. It, 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 this it, Irish football hasn't been in this much of a crisis in a long, long time. And we've let it get this way because we've accepted mediocrity. We have. You can, you can, you can tell me I'm wrong in the comments, but I, I, I believe I'm not. And look... I'm looking at it and I'm just like, where on earth do we go from here? Because, uh, you, like, I try to find the positives every time there's a game, and people always give me credit for it and say, you know, all oh, fair play to you. You're the only one who wants to kind of highlight things and you know look at the the positive things. But there is no positivity in in this formation and this shape. I don't understand. I'd get behind it more so if there was a methodology towards it. Or around it in terms of you get your formation and you, you get it right you have a plan of action okay well when we have the ball this is what we want to do now I don't know whether the, 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 the players are saying that O'Neill is not the problem so what is the problem is he just telling players to say you know oh if you say it bad about me in the media you won't get a game for your country because that's the only reason I can see why Obviously, they're not going to hang their manager out to dry, but for God's sake, don't don't give me that crap and say, oh, well, you know, manager isn't to blame. Because it's quite evident that the manager's been to blame. He didn't even know that Michael Obafemi was going to be in, this, in the squad. He wasn't even meant to travel, and then he comes on tonight. Like, what sort of manager calls up someone and doesn't know if they're actually interested? Like, you, you, you're becoming a laughing stock. An absolute laughing stock. And this is the highest end of our football, our country. It's our highest. And we just, oh, we just, we just accept it. And if you say anything bad about about them or anything like that, oh, you're, you're, you're negative. I'd be one of the most positive Ireland fans you'll see, but he has to go. He just simply has to go. The... I mean, oh God, like, I'm, I'm struggling to think of a chance, you know, where we even look dangerous. Two boys that came on, you know, Ronan Curtis didn't get any of the ball. It wasn't his fault. Didn't get any of the ball. Didn't 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 get anyone passing the ball to him. Every time I seen Hendrick, he was just fouling people. It was good to see Brady come off not injured. That was a plus, I suppose, if you're a Burnley fan. Uh, then. Callum Robinson, everyone's been going on and on about how great he is, but he does very little. I think the system doesn't help him, but he doesn't do a lot. Either way, he'll run for you all day long. So will Chain Long. So, you know, unless we do, do, unless he can start putting the ball in the net, I'm just gonna. He seems like he's just gonna be another journeyman coming in and just doing a little bit of running around and, and not really affecting games because that's what we need. We need players who're gonna affect the game, and you know, albeit he looks. He looks all right, but I wouldn't I wouldn't exaggerate any further than that. Uh, and then yeah, young old Buffemi comes on, then he's capped, so that's put all that crap to bed. Now he probably won't get seen now for another three years. Probably be put back in the reserves and, and not be seen again, uh, just to get him capped. Because this is the, this is what we have become accustomed to, and this is what we've allowed our national team to become a laughing stock. That's that's what we, we've become. We should have got beat 3 0 by Northern Ireland. They should have beat us tonight, only but for the post we would have lost. Richard Kyo fiddling around on the edge of the box, much like Daryl Lenehan the other day, and gets caught and he hit the post. And we got we got out of jail. But I'm just at a loss now, unless. Like, where, where, where do we go from here? You know, we say this every time there's an international break, but it's been going on a year since the last time we played Denmark and they beat us 5-1 in the playoffs. And it just... Uh, I'm at a loss because there's managers out there that come in and just, just freshen up ideas. I think I think if, you, if, if O'Neill was to actually get sacked, I think it would bring a, an actual positivity towards Irish fans. And as bad as that is to say... You know, I've got to give credit where credit's due. He got us to the Euros. Um, he was a game away from, from getting us to the World Cup, but we never really looked convincing. 
So I got to give credit where credit's due. And but for me, he has to go. And whether it's Chris Hewton or Stephen Kenny or Paul Cook or whoever, I just hope that it's looked at and it, there's a thought process and we go into the games in March with a strategy. We might get a manager in who actually works with the players, who actually does set pieces with them, who actually practices stuff. I mean, how many, uh, how many years, or how many times over the years have we seen Ireland, the best trait is from set pieces. You look at Shane Duffy, he's a man mountain. We should be getting balls up there to get corners, but we don't even get into we don't even get into the opposition's box, and if we do, it's sparingly. So, yeah, look, I'm just gonna go on another rant there if I keep going. But look, uh, that's been my aftermatch reaction. Absolutely poor performance, going nowhere, aimless football, and we cannot accept this anymore. So, you know, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Am I being too negative? I don't believe I am. But this is straight after the match. Um, I got pissed on walking over here to film this for you guys. So, yeah, look. What do you think is next for, for Ireland? Do you think O'Neill will go? Do you think change is needed? Do you think, do you think it's the players that are at fault? Do you think it's, it's, it's the management? Or do you think it's at the top of... Irish football let me know in the comments uh, as you can see I'm not very impressed so uh, I still would like to hear you guys thoughts so let me know in the comments and as always don't forget to subscribe we're aiming for 4,000 before um, 2019 so we're only 336 I think away from it so we're not that far away so if you guys could just please hit that subscribe button now uh, it would mean a lot for us because we're we're, we're building towards something here and trying to be the voice of Ireland because no one else will. But look, as always, thanks for being a fan and thanks for watching. Speak to you soon. Oh, actually, don't forget to check our uh, final word uh, tomorrow or the next day. Thanks for watching.